Good morning, everyone. Welcome to spring webinar series hosted by Peregrine Global Services. And um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Alima Jamian Soren. I'm Director of Partner Relations here at Peregrine Global. Uh, with me today is my colleague, uh, Denise Albert, who is a Client Services Manager. Good morning, everyone. This is Denise. I'm glad that you're here today. Thank you, Denise. Uh, a couple housekeeping items. We are recording this presentation, so we'll be happy to share a link to the video recording uh, with you uh, at the end um, of the presentation. And um, I will have um, you know, presentation for 30 to 35 minutes. And um, in terms of how you communicate with us is I'll leave a good 10, 15 minutes for Q&A. If you have a question, please, uh, you can type your question into the question pane on your dashboard. That's the one with the question mark, or it says questions. Uh, you can raise your hand and ask a question uh, if your question needs to be asked and answered right at that moment, which happens. Or if you can uh, wait until the end, feel free to also ask your question at the end. And uh, currently, I have uh, we have um, muted you. So in order to speak, you need to unmute, your, unmute yourself on your end. All right. And uh, again, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us uh, in our webinar. And today we're here to talk about our um, business administration uh, academic programmatic assessment tool. And the tool is online, customizable, flexible. It's um, integrated into your learning management system. But most importantly, our tool offers you with uh, expansive and in-depth reporting capabilities. Um, you know uh, Peregrine, and we have rebranded uh, recently into Peregrine Global Services. And uh, which consists of Peregrine Academic Services, which I'm sure you're more familiar with, and Peregrine Global uh, Foundation and Peregrine Leadership Institute. So I see a number of you are representing um, client institutions. I see a number of you who are fairly new to Peregrine. So feel free to our website, be it peregrineglobal.com or peregrineacademics.com or Peregrine Leadership. Dot com to learn more um, about our activities. And of course, here today, we uh, want to talk to you about um, the challenges you face in finding an assessment tool that is flexible, that is comprehensive, that's affordable, and provides you with the internal analysis and external comparison, right, that corresponds to your program. Uh, we want to talk to you about how are you assessing and evaluating your programmatic learning outcomes. Um, here's a little infographics that uh, describes you, uh, continuous improvement of uh, student learning. And of course, you first start with um, putting your learning objectives and outcomes, right? And, um, and then you want to find an assessment tool to measure those. Uh, once you collect and analyze your data, uh, you want to uh, be able to draw out the lessons learned. And what kind of changes do you need to implement um, after having learned good information from your data? And then once you implement those changes that you have planned, you want to see did the changes you make have um, an intended impact, right? So that's the whole continuous improvement cycle that you all are very familiar with, I'm sure. And that's the closing of the loop. And so we're here to provide you with um, um, you know, the meaningful, cost-effective, and practical solution to the evaluation of your programmatic learning outcomes. Uh, we want to be able to provide you with the comparison of your program's uh, students' results to multiple external aggregates. Um, when you utilize our pre- and post-test structure, you are able to conduct internal analysis of your program. And our tool, uh, helps you to directly measure students' retained knowledge. And uh, when you uh, implement our assessment tool, you are able to meet uh, multiple accreditation requirements. And um, with the business administration uh, assessment tool, as I mentioned, um, the key feature, the key benefit and values you get 
out of our assessment is the in-depth reporting and data analytics, right? The goal is you want to uh, not only conduct assessment, but uh, conduct assessment that provides you with uh, great insight into your program, uh, helps you to identify um, the strengths and the weaknesses of the program so that you will be able to improve the quality of your programs. Uh, our assessment tool uh, provides you with a normed summative assessment um, to measure your uh, programmatic uh, learning outcomes. You can conduct both internal and external programmatic evaluation. Uh, the customizable feature is really cool and I'll talk about it. But uh, another key is you can easily integrate um, this assessment into your academic program. And uh, as I mentioned briefly, you are able to um, use this assessment that has been specifically designed to address not only programmatic accreditation, but also your institutional uh, accreditation requirements that are related to um, outcomes assessment, quality assurance, and external academic benchmarking. Uh, we work with a number of uh, uh, accreditors. We have excellent partnership and uh, uh, great um, collaboration between uh, Peregrine and uh, accrediting associations. For business programs, we work very closely with uh, all the accreditors listed here, uh, be it they are based in the U.S. or outside of the U.S. in the case of the Association of MBAs. And we have a team of uh, um, you know, quality assurance experts who have uh, in-depth knowledge uh, uh, on issues related to accreditation. So if you wanted to get some consultative services or if you wanted to uh, ask just um, any questions related to accreditation processes, standards, guidelines, and principles, please feel, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, in terms of um, uh, the key features of our assessment tool, we have built a specific assessment service that is aligned uh, with your learning outcomes. And you're able to do so by selecting from uh, the core um, business topics for which we have test banks. So we have uh, 13 core uh, business topic test banks um, available to you. And uh, we also have additional supplemental and um, advanced topics. We also have a capability to upload your custom topics onto our, onto our system and create a truly customized uh, assessment solution for you. Um, you can integrate um, our assessment directly into your learning management system for seamless delivery of the service to your students. And another benefit is um, through LTI integration into your LMS, uh, you are able to get uh, the raw scores um, posted to your gradebook automatically. So if you are uh, implementing our assessment, you're not asking your faculty for, um, you know, to add any extra work on their already full plates. If anything, you're helping them to, you know, um, um, free up some resources in terms of time and their efforts. We do offer you three separate uh, test banks based on your academic levels. So the business assessment exams are available in terms of separate test banks for undergraduate programs, for master's programs, and doctoral programs. When you sign up to use our services, uh, you get an access to our client admin site, full access, and uh, you are able to track student progress through the client admin site, uh, the results, and also an ability to run all the analytical reports that we have available for you. The benchmarking of scores with other institutions is based on institutional demographics, and we have a really nice uh, long list of uh, uh, aggregate pools from which you can select and compare your students' results against. We have designed this assessment service uh, so that you can offer it to your students in a non-proctored environment. And uh, as you know it all too well yourselves, um, if you do not require use of uh, exam proctors, that you can save anywhere from $25 to $95 per student in order to conduct an assessment. So that's um, a pretty nice feature, and we're able to uh, offer the exam in a non-proctored environment uh, by utilizing a number of safety and security features built into the system. 
One of them is a randomized exam question delivery uh, to your students. So we have a test bank of thousands of questions, and then our exam questions are drawn randomly from this test bank and offered to the students randomly. So that's uh, one of the features, and I'll talk about it uh, shortly about the others. So we are here to offer you with a, a trusted external measure of uh, student learning, right? And uh, we utilize uh, the inbound and outbound assessment approach. So the idea here is, uh, as you know all too well, if you can use the program level pretest, right? You can get a good baseline measurement of where your student's coming in. And with the outbound assessment, you get uh, you know, the difference between uh, inbound and outbound exams gives you that direct measure of learning, that value added of uh, the program to your student's knowledge base. So if your students are scoring, say, at a 70%, for example, it's one stor story if they were coming at a 50% and you're graduating them at a 70%, that's a whole another story if they were qu coming in at a 20%, right? So that's the benefit of the inbound and outbound assessment approach. We also have schools um, that use our assessment as a midpoint because with the outbound exam, right, the post-test, once a student graduates, student graduates left your institution, so you cannot take any remediation steps. So in order to identify and help students to become more successful, uh, at halfway point, we have schools who have decided to use the assessment as also a midpoint evaluation so they can help students to improve. Um, let's see, uh, so uh, you want to offer the inbound exams, of course, as early as possible in your student's academic career as soon as they declare their major as a, a business administration. And most often, you know your gateway courses. Uh, into your program, right? And we see it as intro to business. Uh, sometimes it's econ, sometimes it's marketing or intro to business communications. Uh, the outbound exam is most often offered as part of a capstone course, if that's what you have. Some schools have thesis, uh, some schools have internship and so forth. And um, so you are going to get really detailed analysis of your exam results, not only on a topical level, but also broken down by subjects. And I'll show you shortly what it looks like. Um, so um, you, of course, are able to get academic benchmarking, external comparison data. Um, we have all types of students and all types of programs. So if you have uh, open enrollment or if you have multiple sessions uh, and your student body demographics do not change significantly from one enrollment cohort to another, then you are able to conduct inbound and outbound exams um, concurrently for statistically valid comparisons. Once a student who has taken the inbound exam goes through a program and completes an outbound exam, we are able to provide you that individual student progress report, which we call pairwise reporting. So uh, we've talked about, um, you know, offering the uh, inbound and outbound exam as part of a course. Uh, we also have international um, clientele, right? And they are able to conduct the assessment exams outside of a course structure. But uh, somehow, especially in Asia, the culture is such that students take uh, schoolwork very seriously. They take uh, assessment exams, especially comprehensive exams offered by an external party, by an organization that's based in the US very seriously. So we have less issues with incentivization, with motivating students and having students try their best on this exam. But most often in the US, um, the exams are included as part of a course, as an activity within a course. Um, in terms of uh, delivery of the exam, just want uh, any questions so far? Just want to make sure no outstanding questions. Uh, in terms of uh, delivery of the exams to your students, there are two ways. One is we create a what we call a school specific microsite for student self registration, which is password protected and branded to your institution. Um, it's just a you know hyperlink we we'll provide you, and uh, you know it's a pretty simple process. Uh, if you wanted full technical integration into your LMS uh, for automated registration and gradebook posting, we we'll work with uh, essentially almost all LMS platforms. Now, customization of the assessment exam for program alignment um, um, could be 
done by program managers, right? The program managers, program directors, or department chairs select the topics that uh, apply to your particular program. And in most uh, situations, what we see is a bachelor's level exam uh, will include anywhere from 10 to 13 topics, and a graduate or master's level exam will have eight to 10. The topic selection really depends on your uh, learning out outcomes and the program curriculum content. Um, each exam offers 10 questions per topic to your students. So if you have an exam of 13 topics, then you're going to have a 130 question exam. If it's eight, then um, you know 80 question. As I mentioned, in addition to the core 13 business administration topics that constitute a business administration program or degree, uh, so this is the list uh, of those 13 um, core topics. You recognize them all. Uh, we offer the additional topics, right? So these are topics that are often used in conjunction with the core business program exam topics to assess a specialization or a concentration within your program. So we offer you the advanced topics in marketing, human resource management. There are supplemental topics in real estate and homeland security and sport management on the bottom. We have separate test banks for public administration programs with undergraduate and graduate test banks offered to you separately. And healthcare administration also has its own 23 topical areas. Uh, accounting and finance, if you have a separate accounting and finance degree program, we recommend you use that. And this uh, test bank comes with 48 supplemental topics. You guys, accounting guys, you really rock. And then criminal justice. So idea here is if you have a, a criminal justice uh, concentration in your business program, you're going to offer you know, anywhere from eight to 10 of the business core topics plus um, three to four or five criminal justice topics. And um, uh, same idea with healthcare focus, right? You can have core business topics plus, um, you know, um, X number of topics selected from the 23 healthcare uh, test bank topics we offer you. If you have a very unique uh, focus in your business program, then uh, we are able to uh, upload your custom topic and offer it along with our topics. There will be no external benchmarking because you would be the only school with such a topic, but you will get the internal analysis, the inbound and outbound, and uh, you know all the other reports that we have available to you. Uh, for example, we have Fashion Institute of Technology as one of our clients, and I believe they have fashion merchandising. So it's, of course, one of the core topics. They need to measure learning outcomes and evaluate um, on uh, the student's performance. So they have, um, um, you know, merchandising is one of their custom topics. So in addition to uh, flexible integration into your um, academic program of the assessment exams, we also offer you uh, flexible purchase options. Uh, you can uh, sell the assessment exams through your bookstore. And that is especially relevant if you have a good population of your student who use Pell Grants or who have come with financial aid. So uh, if the assessment exams are sold through the university bookstore, they can use the financial aid funding or Pell Grants uh, to purchase the exams. But most often what we see is, uh, especially if you're going through an accreditation process or a reaffirmation, then your institution has an assessment funding set aside for you, right? Uh, in that case, uh, we call it institutional purchase with monthly invoicing. So we don't invoice you unless a student has used an exam. So at the end of the month in which your student have used um, the assessment exam, we invoice you and you have 30 days to pay for the invoice. Uh, for the international clients, especially um, um, in third world countries, we have special pricing, but we also have a prepayment arrangement available to them. Uh, sometimes schools are able to add a course fee or an assessment fee um, and then collect uh, these fees along with tuition payment, and that would be treated the same as institutional purchase. Um, sometimes uh, schools want um, students uh, directly purchase the assessment exams from our secure e-commerce site. Uh, we also offer you that option as well. 
So uh, I would like to show you what the platform uh, looks like and uh, uh, I'll be more than happy to share with you the guest access uh, registration instructions so for you to go and review it. And this is what the uh, secure online delivery platform looks like. Um, I mentioned we have a number of uh, safety and security measures built into the system to ensure the integrity of the exam process. And they are randomized uh, question selection, offering topics, subtopics, questions randomly to the students. Uh, when the exam window opens up, the web browser is disabled, the uh, copy and paste functionalities are also disabled, but we understand students have multiple um, devices, so each question is timed. But in addition to that, we monitor student activity. We also monitor the IP range of your institution. And as you can see here, if a student uh, moves away from the exam window, a message pops up and tells the student that, you know, we've noticed you have navigated away from the exam window. If this keeps happening, we have to notify your instructor. And we do. And uh, so it kind of tells the student there's a big brother watching. But you as program coordinators or faculty or, you know, department chairs, uh, as part of the report, you will receive information on how much time students spent completing the exam, sections of the exam, but also how much time students spent away from the exam window. So that will tell you um, your student engagement on these exams. So uh, students have um, uh, 48 hours to complete the exam from the time they started registered and started the exam. They can take two 15-minute breaks. They can also log out and log back uh, two more times. And so it's, uh, each question is also timed to three minutes. So it's pretty flexible and it's designed so that students can take these exams at the place, time, and uh, uh, space of their choosing. Students receive a completion certificate uh, at the end of the exam for academic accountability. Uh, and also um, we have um, talked about you know, incorporating the exam into a course, right? Capstone course, for example. Um, but what we see as a best practice is if you are able to give credit for completion of the exam, some schools give uh, credit for uh, extra credit for extra performance, um, you know, going above and beyond, or uh, grading of the exam and using that grade as part of the fa final course grade is also um, another best practice. So students uh, cannot backtrack. They have to answer each question recorded in order to move forward. And then, um, as I mentioned, the exam is available for 48 hours. Uh, this is what the student completion certificate looks like. And the front page is a summary and the back page is uh, uh, a lot more detailed, uh, providing the results broken down to a uh, more granular level of subject level results. Students can download the uh, completion certificate, it's emailed to them, and then program coordinators can access uh, completion certificates through the client admin site. Uh, students actually enjoy receiving this completion certificate. Some, they want to see uh, their improvement, see where they started, where they ended. Uh, some students are able to use the uh, this you know, nationally normed assessment results as part of their job application portfolio. Especially there are certain skills and certain competencies that map to the job requirement skills. And they have performed at a say 95th percentile. They could use it as part of uh, another proof of having achieved those competencies. So it helps students with them, their uh, job application and employment. All right, so the next I wanted to go into um, the client admin and the reports. I just wanted to pause and see if anyone had any questions at this point. Make sure we are all good in here. All right. So uh, as you sign up uh, to use any of our services, right, become a Peregrine client, you get access to uh, the client admin site. Uh, there could be multiple people with different uh, access levels to, the, to your data. Unless you tell us who should have access to your data, of course, we take the safety and security of your um, data very seriously. And um, this is what the landing page of the client admin looks like, which provides you with a 24 seven access to all your student results and progress. And this is where you can generate both individual and summative results. And uh, you can use a very simple uh, report wizard that guides you 
uh, how to uh, use the site and how to generate reports. But we have client services management team. Denise is here. Is a, uh, She greeted you guys. Uh, they are happy to provide you with training, with demo, and how to use the site and how to generate reports and how to um, interpret the results. They have wealth of information of working with our client institution. Uh, one of the features, and this is a free feature uh, that is available in the client admin site, is what we call the learning outcomes mapping and reporting utility. And this helps you to manage and report your outcomes assessment results across uh, different academic levels. So uh, first you enter your institution's learning outcomes uh, by academic levels, right? And it could be first the university level, the college level, the program level. You can even go down to course level learning outcomes. You map those learning outcomes to each other. And then you map uh, the learning outcomes at these different levels to the assessment tools that are used to measure them. Uh, to start with, we are offering uh, an ability to map to our assessment exams, but going forward, we want uh, to build up capability where you could map um, to any of your assessment tools, right? It could be your in-house developed survey, uh, evaluations, portfolio, what have you. And uh, the goal is here uh, to help you to run a report of the assessment results by academic level that is organized by uh, learning outcomes and assessment tools mapped to them in one streamlined process. So if you want to learn more about it, if you're a client institution, please reach out to your client services managers. And if you are a prospective client school, we are happy to talk to you and get you set up from the get-go. All right, so in terms of reports, we uh, group them into sort of three types of reports. One is individual student results-based reports, and that's what the first report is. An Excel file of your student results um, uh, showing the percent of questions students answered correctly for each of the topics and subject areas. And you can download this data, you can export this data, you can uh, link it to any of your databases that you might have for further analysis. Uh, we collect student ID, first name, last name, and email address. So we don't do uh, student demographics and so forth. But for your programmatic evaluation purposes, uh, we strive to create all the reports you might need for that purpose. We talked about pairwise reporting. This is just individual student progress report. Once you have tested with us for a few years and then you have uh, the same students who have taken inbound, outbound, we can create this report. You can create this. You can run this report. There's also an executive summary version of the report available to you. So for programmatic evaluation, um, at the beginning, we had this nice, you know, closing the loop infographics, right? So you're going to use the longitudinal analysis report for your continuous improvement purposes and closing the loop you can select up to four exam periods in one report. And then defining exam periods is pretty flexible. It's up to you. You could combine, you know, different, you can define periods as quarterly, as annual, biannual, you know, however you want to define. So that's cool. Uh, the internal analysis report is going to be really your go-to report. Uh, this is the detailed uh, report uh, that provides you information on where you're doing well, and where you could actually uh, improve your students' results, right? If you do it inbound and outbound, you're going to have the percentage change between the results. And then the um, really nice thing is it's not just accounting, right? Accounting broken down into four to eight subject areas. So how did your students do on balance sheets, right? Income statements and, tax, you know, um, what else? I'm not an accounting person. But uh, first, of course, you want to make sure you have a good sample. And you want to make sure that certain areas you're looking at, you actually do have accounting offered to your students, right? And then um, you really focus uh, on the areas where you could improve your student results. And the internal analysis report, you can select one aggregate pool of comparison. But if you wanted to see uh, how your students are doing relative to external aggregate pools, right? Then you're going to run the external comparison report. Uh, again, here you can select up to five aggregate pools, and then all these reports are really detailed. So you can, you know, go into marketing and then go into really the uh, components of marketing, for example. 
there are exactly summary versions of uh, the internal analysis report and external comparison report available to you for highlights and just an abbreviated summary of the report results. And if you wanted to see the program comparison and cohort comparison uh, report, uh, this is really cool one where you want to make sure, for example, your business students with accounting focus, are they performing at a higher level on accounting topics than your marketing concentration students, right? In terms of student cohort, you can define it the way you need to, you know, make it useful to you. It could be campus locations. It could be uh, types of learners. Uh, if you have adult learners versus traditional students versus transfer students. So that gives you an extra insight into your students' results and ability to cut and slice it and compare the results against each other. Uh, in terms of supplemental reports, I'll come back to the response distractor um, to the, at, at the end. Um, if you wanted to see, um, you know, which schools make up each of the different aggregates, right? You're going to run the client schools and the aggregates report. I'm going from the bottom. Uh, if you want to see the statistical uh, data for each of the different aggregates that we have, you're going to run the aggregate extraction report. And I did mention that some schools use um, uh, the score uh, or grade the comprehensive assessment exam and use this uh, a grade of the assessment exam results as part of the overall course grade. We provide you with a grade scale conversion report in order for you to make it easy uh, for you. So that's that. And we also offer you a free complimentary uh, student survey service that you can attach to your outbound exam. Usually these are offered right before the outbound exam. And the questions are your questions, right? These could be satisfaction survey questions. These could be questions that get answers for you for indirect measure of learning. So with Peregrine's assessment tool here, you can get the external measure of learning. Of course, we are external assessors to you. Um, direct measure with inbound outbound structure and then comparative measure we're providing external bench external benchmarking of your results Ooh, excuse me and then using the complementary student survey you can get indirect measure of learning one thing uh, we recommend is don't um, uh, have more than um, say you know five to eight questions because this is offered right before the outbound exam and you want your students to perform their best on the assessment exam um the response distractor report right so here's some more information on how easy it is and um, you don't have to memorize how to run the reports uh, there's drop down menu for everything and there's a little synopsis of what each report is to jog your memory and again the client services management team is happy to um, provide training of how to use the uh, client admin to run reports and so forth so I've saved the last, and I know I have uh, just a couple of minutes before I want to wrap it up and open the floor for your questions. So the response distractor report. Uh, so far, we have been looking at the percent of questions students answer it correctly, right? Students' knowledge levels, and that's great. And you have good sample, you have established the trend, you have established that, you know, the, the areas of your focus, where your students doing well, where you could improve and all that. And then this takes it to the next level. So we want to understand, um, you know, we have not only the students' correct responses, but we have the incorrect answers, right? And we want to understand why are students answering questions incorrectly, assuming, and they do put good effort, right? They go through logical and critical thinking to arrive at these incorrect um, answers. So what we did is we took our database and we took our test bank questions and we coded each of the incorrect responses to one of the what's called five, um, types of response distractors. So students answering questions incorrectly due to um, calculation-based error, concept-based error, conclusion-based error, fact-based error, or interpretation-based error. So based on this information, we're able to identify the knowledge gaps. So how does it work? For example, uh, in this report, you'll get a set of uh, tables, first looking at your sample, and then the next set of tables provides comparison of your students' results against the test bank sample. And then the third set, it looks at your sample relative to the aggregate pool of comparison. 
right? So the idea here is your students are they qu answering questions uh, at a higher frequency than the test bank sample or the aggregate pool sample due to one of these um, response distractors. So let's just say unaccounting, right? And we actually in this report highlight the cells uh, that have statistically significant differences, um, be it positive or negative. And um, so for example, on accounting, right? And your students are uh, selecting uh, incorrect answers at a higher frequency due to calculation-based error than the test bank sample or the aggregate poll sample. So then uh, you can look at it and say, well, how can you remedy the situation, right? One way could be, could you add um, a couple math review sessions for your accounting students, you know, math for accounting? And could that help with the, uh, the results that you see? Uh, another example is say, for example, for strategic uh, uh, management, right? Your students are making, again, a higher, you know, errors due to um, concept or conclusion-based error. So answering questions at a higher frequency than the sample and the aggregate pool. Then you look at your curriculum and we know contact hours are limited, right? If you are not able to add any more uh, coverage for uh, the particular area where your students are not doing well within strategic management, then uh, could you add an activity, group assignment, group activity where it would reinforce and help the students with uh, critical thinking, right, with an ability to arrive at right conclusions and uh, understanding of the concept be better. So this is a really cool tool that helps you not only with uh, identifying knowledge gaps and seeing where your students could improve, but also it also assists you with uh, coming up with a solution to um, the, uh, the gaps that you notice. So that's kind of cool stuff. And I know I've talked enough. Um, I want to open the floor to your questions. And here's some student survey, great skill. And um, um, as I mentioned, at the conclusion of this um, presentation, uh, we will send you uh, guest access. We'll be happy to send you guest access uh, instructions. And if you have more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at info at Peregrin Global or Denise, um, the client services management team, they share the same email address under client services at Peregrine Global. And um, while you are thinking of your questions, Denise, would you like to add um, um, and share your perspective? Yeah, thanks, Alma. Um, you did a great job with the overview of um, some of those reporting features. There, there are so many um, reports available to you in the client admin console and uh, the client service managers, including myself, we really enjoy um, hosting a client admin tour. So if you're a current client or you're thinking about becoming a client, we will uh, schedule a client admin tour with you and actually share our screen, walk through the client admin site and show you how you can generate some of those reports that Alama just highlighted in this um, webinar, plus some of the others um, that we didn't spend a lot of time on today. So um, please, if you if you need that uh, assistance, just reach out to us at the um, client services email, and we'll be happy to schedule that with you, um, whether you're current client or you're considering becoming a client. Oh, thank you so much, Denise. Thank you, Alama. This slide shows you how you can combine assessment with of our with our other online educational courses and programs, right? Um, the academic leveling courses are most often used for incoming students into MBA programs or doctoral programs who need assistance with leveling, right? We also have undergraduate programs who have students moving from two-year programs to your four-year programs also utilizing academic leveling courses. These are individual 15 courses that tackles the core business topical areas. Most often it's the accounting, it's the finance, it's the economics, macro micro, it's the statistics that are students in need of either refreshing or going through the course in order to be more successful in their, for example, um, postgraduate uh, master's level courses. We have the Business School Resource Center, um, which uh, offers you a current um, business news articles with activities built in the system to uh, enrich your 
online instruction. Uh, there's a syllabus. So what happens is you get weekly newsletter as a faculty if you sign up for the service and it provides you the articles that our academic writers have selected and um, and then it comes with the weekly quiz questions, weekly you know discussion post topics or activities for in or out of classroom and then you can also create a, a midterm exam based on the uh, test bank of questions that we have uh, created within this resource. And the real nice thing is that, you know, you get your students into uh, a habit of reading current news and uh, also students are reading and learning about something that's a part of their lives, Apple, Google, right, Tesla, whatever's happening right now in the business using world. And then the next thing is in the exam um, a platform, you have an ability to create a midterm exam that uses the Bloom's taxonomy. So if you are at the beginning of the academic year, if you're working with undergraduate students, you might have lower level Bloom's taxonomy questions uh, selected uh, as part of your midterm exam that you create. And towards the end or for graduate uh, level of instruction, you can ha have more of the higher level Bloom's taxonomy questions that comprise your assessment exam. So it's a really cool tool, uh, especially with online instruction uh, and then transition into online instruction that hel this helps you to augment, to supplement, and to help you to make your curriculum uh, closer uh, to your students, right? Adds variety and makes it more interactive and engaging for your students. A right inside is an academic um, a writing readiness course that comes with the 50 question uh, assessment exam, and it helps students to become um, better writers. And we know uh, especially students of this generation, not as used to writing full sentences, full paragraphs. And so this really helps you with uh, students introducing them to different types of writing, right? Word choice. Uh, even if they're posting uh, into discussion uh, boards their contribution, we also help uh, with them. We help them with uh, how to conduct uh, research, what are the good resources, how to not plagiarize, which is an issue, especially how what is considered paraphrasing. And, and it has also built in APA, MLA or CMS. So if you are struggling with or if you are becoming an APA police, uh, this is a really great resource for anyone who's uh, doing writing and academic writing plus any writing for your course. So that's also a really cool um, uh, service you can uh, offer to your students, especially within the online instruction that we are making switch to. So this just shows you the breadth of uh, our higher education services. So assessment, online educational courses and program, and other academic um, consulting services. So I just want to make sure you have, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them and uh, or raise your hand by clicking on that hand icon. Otherwise, I'm going to assume this has been either very informative and very clear presentation, or you all have fallen asleep. All right, well, with that, um, I would like to conclude the presentation. Thank you very much for attending it and, um, you know, stay safe and healthy. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, Alma. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you. Bye.